this is your boy, D. Nose the Knob is AKA Derek. And are you frustrated? Are you angry? Are you livid about something? I myself, I'm so upset about uh, daylight savings time. I promise you, I hate when it goes back up and you, you're trying to get some rest and that sun is just beaming down on you or whatnot. Uh, there's a article out where, you know, health uh, health advisors are saying that it is caused sometimes by daylight savings time. Does that make you angry? I know it truly makes me angry. How about that? Uh, so if you are truly, truly upset about daylight saving time and, and the powers that be that have this stupid daylight saving times, don't get your frustrations out over there. Get your frustration out here. At Russell Graham Gripe. If you're watching this today, you're watching tomorrow, you're watching it next week. I truly do thank you from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my loins. I truly do thank you about you guys. Without you guys, it truly wouldn't be me. I'm humbled eyes each and every single time I'm allowed to do this. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you so much for allowing your boy, Dino Stranavis, for doing the show. Um... If you don't know anything about Axe Wrestle, well, not Axe, this is Wrestle Cram Gripes, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you don't know anything about Wrestle Cram Gripes, I, myself, I put out a feed each and every single Wednesday for you guys to consume. Get those frustrations out, get those angriness out, and you can put them out here. We'll talk about it. I usually uh, give my confirms and non-confirms on those uh, gripes. And I, myself, I usually do a gripe at the very end of the show or whatnot. So stay tuned to the end of the show. You can hear about my gripe or whatnot. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You guys like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Uh, we're still on the road to 300. Hey, we're five subs away from uh, five subs. Just five. Five. I remember the, the, the subway, $5 foot long thing. Yeah, so five, five subs left, and we will be at 300. How about that? Um, I'm on the TikToks for now. <laughs> also, I'm on uh, the uh, the Twitter or X machine. Also, I am I have my own Facebook group club, and it's called WrestleCram Super Club, so go check me out on all three platforms. Um, and, uh, is that it? Uh, don't forget that, uh, the Axe Russell Cram and what I learned, uh, feeds, they are out right now, so you can get those out, uh, and have a great time with those as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's, with, without further ado, let's get into the gripes of what not the very first gripe is going to be from Mr. Greenhead. How we doing, Mr. Greenhead? Uh, as AW, uh, has way too many heel stables and heel characters, why bring Okada in as a heel as well? Um, I'm gonna go 50-50 with this. Um, I, I I will agree with the first part where there are a ton of heel stables. There are a ton of heel um, uh, uh, characters, including probably Hangman Page turning himself to a heel, uh, which is uh, very interesting. Um, the Okada situation, I love this situation, so that's why I gotta go 50-50 with this. I am really liking and digging the new elite, I am loving the Okada situation, hopefully he is the leader of the new elite, I love, I'm just loving it, it is very, very fun what they are doing right now, they're firing people, they're saying that Kenny Omega is no longer with the elite, I mean, what more can you say about this? I mean, this is something that I am enjoying about spicing it up when it comes to AEW. And this is probably going to work. I truly think that. Um, am I kind of weirded out by Swerve becoming a face? Yes, because I would have loved to have Swerve as a heel type of, 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 of champion, but we're not going to get there. We're going to get this face uh, swerve, and it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, but but the fans are loving it. The fans are loving the who's house, swerve house. Usually, if you are a face, you are going to get a, 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 a more, um, you're going to get that pop, that really fun pop uh, when you say a, a, a catchphrase or something like that. So I understand that, but I'm still kind of weirded out because you have a monster faction. Your faction is a heel type faction. The 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 leader. Of, I mean, your your sidekick uh, uh, is 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 
a heel, you know, person. So it, it's going to be a very weird situation. Are they going to kick him out of the mobile embassy because, you know, he's now trying to put this new face on? I don't know. It's going to be very weird. So I'm going to go 50-50 with this. You are absolutely correct that there are a ton of heel factions. But usually factions are heel type. You know, they I don't know any face or a lot of face uh, uh, of factions that are fate, uh, that are uh, a group of people. Um, I mean, Bobby, Bobby Lashley probably has a, a... We don't know what's going on with that situation, but uh, his faction is, is now kind of a face type of faction or whatnot. But, I mean, other than that, who, who else has a group of people that are just nice all the time? I mean, that would be a situation. I mean... The, and the only person I can only, honestly think of as a right now, other than the Bobby Lashley situation, will probably be um, the, what the, over there on Raw, where uh, if you call it a faction, um, D, D, uh, DIY and The Miz and uh, R-Truth. I mean, if you want to call them a faction as of right now. But, but once again, just think about it. Uh, how many people uh, that, have a, that have a stable... That are actually just good guys. That are happy to... Well, let me take that back. Because Orange Cassidy has his group. Let me take that back. So, I don't know. But I still go 50-50 with this. <laughs> I still go 50-50 with this. Um, but I do thank you. I do thank you for your gripe. I do thank you for that gripe. Um, the uh, next gripe is going to be from Larry Gear 1. How we doing, Larry Gear 1? So, what purpose did FTR losing to a non-tag team at Revolution? Uh, it makes them now look like trash. They are the only legitimate tag team opponents uh, other than the Young Bucks to win the tournament. This makes no sense. Well, uh, I don't know if they're trying to do a crisis, a crisis type of situation with FTR. They have been hot uh, the first uh, it, well, the ending part of 2023 uh, and the beginning of 2023 and also uh, 2012 when they were having all of those titles. I mean, they held a ton of titles. Um, now, the only thing I can possibly think of with this situation is that, um, you know, uh, I don't... The Claudio Castanoli and the uh, John Moxley situation, I knew that they were going to lose. Um, to them, to, uh, you know, the Blackpool Combat Club. I knew they were going to lose to them. I don't know if they're trying to build a tag team inside of the Blackpool Combat Club to make them legitimate for this tournament, but I truly think that FTR is not going to win this. Um, now, uh, your gripe, I will say, I would give it a 50-50 as well. There are other tag team, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, legitimate people, um, that I think should have that title. Uh, I really enjoyed that FTR did a job to Big Bill and Ricky Starks. Um, you know, once again, I will say this. Uh, there are, and I'll say this, you know, no disrespect to your gripe, but there are more tag teams uh, in the AEW division that truly deserve these titles. Now, uh, they are probably the highest paid tag team in AEW, I will say that. But, I mean, having the title doesn't mean that, you know, hey, uh, we're the best. They, they, to me, having a tag, having any title, not even a tag team title, but having any title is trying to prop up a up-and-coming type of group. I mean, uh, I, I love that, you know, they did lose to Blackpool Combat Club. Um, I would love to see some more legitimate uh, tag teams out there to try to get those titles. I do love the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks are playing, are, are doing a, a really great uh, 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 storyline right now. Very interesting storyline right now. So I do love what they're what they're doing. But you know, and once again, I truly think that they should win those titles. But I wouldn't be mad if if something like Private Party wins or or uh, Mac. Uh, Matt and Castor win those titles again, or probably um, the, um, the the Gun Club. I would love to see them try to get those titles. Somebody new to get those titles. So, I mean, I'm not really upset with them losing um, and having a crisis uh, situation. It looks like Dax probably wants to run as a single competitor anyway, and I would love to see that. Dax is really, really good. Uh, so, we'll see what happens with this. But I'll give it a 50-50 on that one. But I do thank you. I do thank you for that gripe. Uh, the next gripe is going to be from a Dragon Hunter XD. How we doing a Dragon Hunter XD? 
there are entirely too many heels on AEW roster. So why are they bringing Okada into uh, the heel? What? What? This is this the same one? It's the it's the same one. Once again, I will say this as well. I will say it again. I will say it again. Look, it's fifty fifty on that. I am honestly saying that um, Okada. Uh, is doing a great job. Okada's doing a great job. The Young Bucks are doing a great job. Hands down, 50-50 on this one. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> for that gripe. Thank you so much for that gripe. Uh, lots of people upset about the heel situation. Um, uh, so, yeah, he said there's too many heels on the AEW roster, and he was upset with the Okada situation. Uh, Mr. Green is upset with there's too many heel stables in AEW, and of course, he talked about Okada running as a heel as well. Goodness gracious, I, I like it. I like it. In the comments, in the comments, let me know if you are liking the Okada situation uh, or him coming in as a heel. And also uh, with Mr. Greenhead, uh, let me know, uh, am I wrong about more stables being heel type of uh, structures than face structures? Uh, let me know in the comments or whatnot. Uh, the next, but thank you. Thank you so much for that gripe. Thank you so much for that gripe. The next gripe is going to be from Laurel. How are we doing, Laurel? Me and LA Knight gripe is that he isn't touching any uh, t title program for WrestleMania. This isn't cool. He hasn't gotten cold. What gives? I think he's going to be wrestling AJ Styles one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. But it looks like Logan Paul isn't going to be wrestling for that title as well. It looks like it's going to be a tag team match uh, between um, uh, uh, Logan Paul and, uh, is it K.I.? I forgot that boy's name. But him, uh, the British young man, and uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. That's what it looked like, looked like it's going to be. So there's not even going to be him putting that title on the line. So, I mean, it's going to be uh, very interesting. Now, with the L.A. Knight situation, look, I know he is not uh, cold. I, he is, I, every time I see him, he is doing a Slim Jim commercial with Bianca Belair. So, I understand where you're coming from. Yes, he should be in a title, uh, uh, some, some type of title situation. But I will say this, if he is facing AJ Styles, and we know that he's going to win against AJ Styles, I would love to see this storyline kind of build up. Uh, to some type of situation. No, he's not as big as Cody Rhodes. He's not as big as Seth freaking Rollins. No, he should not have another bite at the apple of the tribal chief. I mean, that's just truth. That's just truth. I would love to see him go to go from SmackDown to uh, um, the uh, Raw brand and see what he can do over there. I think he would be a great champion over there, a great world champion over there, facing probably um, uh, Drew McIntyre when he beats uh, uh, Seth for that title. Um, have Drew have a tr be a transitional champion. I know that the draft should be right around the corner, so we will see what happens with this. But yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, your gripe is 100% confirmed on this. He should be in some type of title scene. I would have loved to see him uh, face uh, Logan Paul at WrestleMania, him taking that title off of him. But I think he's bigger than, than the United States Championship. I truly do. I would love to see him uh, in something bigger and have him win that world title just off the grip. I would love to see that. But, you know, it is what it is. A man can truly dream. And I do thank you for that gripe, Laurel. I do thank you. Next gripe is going to be from Mitch Does It. How we doing, Mitch Does It? Uh, he has a lengthy one. Uh, my, I got a gripe for the week. So here it is. Why is, Creed, why is the Creed Brothers sitting backstage in creative with Tyrus eating grapes every week? <laughs> And not having bigger matches on our television screens. On the Monday nights, on Monday nights, uh, the Creed brothers need more storylines. They should have put them in the story with Seth and Cody, and have them help feud with the Bloodline during Mania events, d during the main event match. Uh, something storyline wise is always better than nothing what's going on i will say this i think the creed brothers are one of the best tag teams 
to ever come out of NXT. So, I agree with you on that situation. But I thought that they were going to uh, probably uh, split them apart and have uh, Julius, I think, uh, run as a singles competitor. That's what I thought I read in the dirt sheets a long time ago. I thought they was going to give Julius a run with the uh, NXT World Championship. But I love Brutus. I'm a bigger Brutus fan than I am a Julius fan. I'm sorry. I like, Ju I like Brutus more. But... Uh, I Look, I understand where you're coming from. I am truly lost on why the Creed Brothers are not... I don't even think they're in the tournament uh, for this uh, this ladder match that they're going to have. Uh, in uh, If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But shouldn't they be in the uh, tournament uh, or this ladder match at, at WrestleMania? I would love to see that. Them and... Uh, the uh, indie series, I would love to see them uh, in that uh, match as well. Somebody taking that title, taking those titles off of the uh, uh, Judgment Day would be uh, quite interesting. So I understand. Yes, them being in the background eating with Tyrus, I'm so lost behind that. You have better eyes than I do because I really forgot that the Creed Brothers was on the Raw brand. That's how crazy this is. They are so good, it makes no sense. I am truly, truly lost on why Ivy Nile is getting more screen time than the Creed Brothers. Even though I really like Ivy Nile, am I shooting my shot? Probably. She's very pretty. So I will say that as well. Look, <laughs> yes, look, it's wild. It is a wild time in the the, the, uh, the WWE. Try saying that five times fast. It is truly a wild time in the WWE. I agree with you. Um, They don't do... Tag team, uh, uh, their tag team division like AEW does, or even their trios division, uh, is better to me, uh, in AEW than the tag team division. Number one, the Judgment Day should not have those tag titles. Number one, I'm just telling you the truth. They have them on them for what? I mean, for them to show that they have a lot of titles. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Copy. Hear you loud and clear. But once again, I'm going to say this again. They should not have those titles. They should be ramping up. They have three three hours. I said four. Three hours of time to fill in the Raw brand. Why, why aren't they trying to put tag teams together and try to make this a better division? I mean, I've been saying this time and time again. I mean, AEW has truly showed us the way when it came to the tag team division. Not only that, but at the beginning of of the season of the uh, of Wrestle uh, of, of well, at the end of WrestleMania uh, of uh, thirty nine, when we had that beautiful match of all time, I think one of the greatest tag team matches of all time, the Usos uh, versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I mean, I thought that we were going to get a huge awesome benefit with this situation um, after this, but it just fell apart. I mean, uh, the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn title run was absolute garbage. If you don't believe me, let me know. But I truly think that that title run wasn't good at all. So, I mean, I don't know if they just need to sit down and watch the, the tag team division over there in AEW, uh, even though it's kind of slow over there, but it's still good. Still good. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I absolutely agree with you. The Creed Brothers are really good, and I hate that they are not doing even comedic stuff. I mean, do something other than them sitting in the back eating grapes with Tyrus. Now, I mean, Tyrus is doing absolutely nothing. Is he still the ambassador, I guess, of WWE? I think he's still the ambassador doing that or whatnot. He still the hoo-hoo-hoo stuff. I don't know. I have no idea. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. Your gripe is 100% confirmed. I most definitely agree with you on that. Uh, thank you so much for that gripe, Mitch does it. The next gripe is going to be from Pomegranate Juice 96. How we doing, Pomegranate Juice 96? I said, I am sorry, but time is running out for the Money in the Bank winner, Damian Priest. June is really, really close, and even if, it, if he, he does cash in, he will either lose to Drew or Seth. Sadness. Yes, I agree with you 100% on that situation. I truly think that uh, it's, I think, truly, I think that it, the time has passed um, before Damian Priest to even do anything. I mean, it's it's a sucky situation. 
He was hot when he had the situation, and he won that title. I mean, the Bad Bunny stuff was really, really good. I really, really enjoyed uh, Damian Priest. Right now, it's just uh, he's losing all the time. He's trying to cash it in, and something comedic happens, and he slips on a banana peel and falls on the ground, and the the the, the money in the briefcase just falls away. Or uh, uh, Rhea Ripley has the uh, the uh, briefcase, and somebody grabs it from her and runs into the ring and, and just says, I got the briefcase, and then runs in the back. I mean, it's just truly crazy how Damian Priest has been uh, 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 created this clown this clown gimmick now. It's just hilarious to me that you have such a powerhouse of a man with Damian Priest. And not only that, but a really stable, stable, no pun intended, with this situation. I'm so lost behind it. It really just baffles the brain. I agree your gripe is 100% confirmed. It is truly sadness. I don't know what they're going to do with the money in the bank uh, uh, winner of Damian Priest, or even the Money in the Bank gimmick altogether. It's truly getting very weird. That's all I can say about that. So, uh, we'll talk about that more uh, when I talk about my uh, uh, my gripe. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, the next and final gripe is going to be uh, from Black Star Boy. How we doing, Black Star Boy? My gripe is about AEW Revolution. In parentheses, I loved it. But how they need to get better on their time. The pay-per-view ended and it cut off Sting's retirement match speech. I really wanted to see uh, this and had to wait on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, that truly sucked. I agree with you on, on that. Uh, I don't know why they don't have a great record when it comes to their timing. Um, yes, it did cut off after you wanted to see Sting actually talk. You had to wait, and I put it on my Facebook uh, group page, so if you wanted to see it, you gotta look, but it is further down, because, uh, you know, I'm posting every single day, or every hour on the hour, usually. But I did put his retirement speech on the, um, on the, um, on my page. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to check it, you can check it. I'll have to probably, if I find it, I'll, I'll repost it and put it on the top. But, um, yeah, it was really sucky. Uh, even uh, Jim Carnett, Corny himself, actually talked about this on the Jim Carnett experience where he was like, um, they truly need to uh, work on their time. And this was supposed to be a huge uh, thing. And I truly think it was. Don't don't get me wrong. I think Sting did uh, that match was a, a really fun, uh, overbooked of course match. I thought it was a really fun match. It was some really bad situations with the Darby Allen stuff. But once again, I thought it was a really innovative match. I thought it was. Like I said, he's sixty five. He can only do so much. But I thought it was really really good. Uh, but once again, I truly think that they need to work on their time, uh, and even not even that, but even you know their their runovers or whatnot. They need to let people know, hey, we have runover because once again, uh, I think um, somebody in the Wrestling Observer, I forgot, uh, Brian Alvarez, I think it was, that was talking about uh, their timing or whatnot, and uh, do I need to uh, do my DVR for the uh, because you know you can put your DVR on I think ten minutes after which I usually do, um, especially with the NXT, because they go they go over about five minutes or uh, whatnot. But all of the uh, WWEs, they will let you know, hey, it is overtime on there, so I need you to do your DVR about five to ten minutes over. And I understand that. It makes perfect sense to me, and I respect it times 12. I really do. But, I mean, uh, with them, it's like, yeah, we're going to do overrun, but we don't know. I mean, so they really need to work on that. I mean, it's a lot of things that AEW need to work on. I do agree with that. I will agree with you on that. So, yes, 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 I agree. Your gripe is 100% confirmed. Thank you so much for that gripe. I was going to talk about my gripe, my gripe. Well, I was going to talk about the the uh, the state of... Uh, do we really need the uh, money in the bank? But we do. I'm going to scratch that. I We do. We'll, I'll talk about that later on. Um, I'll talk about it later on. But that's not my gripe. My gripe is going to be about uh, the 
uh, relationships in AEW. First and foremost, I will say this, and I'll always say this. I am a fan of AEW. Hands down, huge fan of AEW. But when you have people that are consistently upset and upset not only with the product, but themselves as well and other people, and it gets out, it leaks out, it is a problem. WWE has the exact same thing, but do we hear about it a lot? No, we don't. We don't hear about these trials and tribulations. The only thing that I've heard good about social media uh, was the C.J. Perry and uh, Miro breakup. They are still friends. They are mutual, and life goes on. Yes, I'm going through a divorce as well, so I understand what's going on. I'm happy for them that they are still friends, you know, hands down, happy with that. So, but when you hear, like, wrestlers upset over a person that's not even in the company right now or trying to uh, talk to people to try to get into the company, that's where we have situations and issues that just are the weirdest or whatnot. So if you don't know anything about what's going on, Matt Caster was shitting on Sheldon Benjamin saying, do we really need this guy? I mean, really? I mean, like, what's the point? You know, and I'm not saying that verbatim. I'm not talking about the tweet verbatim, but he was really crapping on him or whatnot. And that's when um, Keith Lee came in and was like, dude, what are you talking about? You know, and, and it's just a whole bunch of just a whole bunch of craziness that's going on uh, with this uh, uh, situation. Uh, even with the uh, uh, Sammy Guevara uh, situation between him and uh, Andrade El Idolo, and of course, Sammy Guevara uh, with the situation uh, with uh, Eddie Kingston. And of course, the situation with Sammy Guevara being suspended for not, I will say this, he was suspended for not the the dive. He was suspended off of, after that, still putting him on his head yet again. That's what he was suspended for. So, all of this drama needs to stop, or Tony Khan needs to kind of put his foot down when it comes to social media type of situations. I know that uh, Brian Danielson is part of uh, the disciplinary committee along with some unknown uh, 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 lawyers as well. But here's the thing, and I will say this again, you have to lead from the front. So Tony Khan needs to chill out with the tweets as well. Yes, we know that he is the CEO. We know that he does a lot of things uh, in social media, but you have to lead from the front. And you are not leading from the front when you are doing your own Twitter wars with other situ with other people that are beneath you, that are beneath you. So you can't you you can't tell me what to, you can't tell me what to do, and you're doing the exact same thing. We're talking about grown up. We're not talking about children. We're talking about grown ass men that are making probably over seventy five thousand dollars a year, more than a, what a lot of people make. So, I mean, it's just really weird to me that we are getting these situations, we're getting these Twitter wars on people, on your coworkers, and you know that it's 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 going to erupt when they go talk to one another. We know that we're going to get more suspensions because there are going to be fights in a, a, a backstage, and it's just going to be crazy yet again. All I can say, once again, uh, to Tony Khan, which I will say I love AEW, I'm an AEW fan, but you have to put on your big boy pants. And when you do, I promise you AEW will be will be probably a million times better. But you have to put your big boy pants on. What do you think about my gripe? What do you think about what I said or whatnot? You know, usually I get a lot of fun or whatnot. You know, but this one is personal to me. Um, but, you know, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You guys like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. Um, also, we're still on the road to 300. I think we're at uh, 295. Ooh, 295. So, um, <laughs> y'all go and get over there and get on the, uh, the, have a great time. I'm on the, uh, I'm on TikTok for now. I'm on, uh, uh, what else I'm on? I'm on uh, the X or Twitter machine. I also have my own uh, Facebook group club. So go check me out on all three of those platforms as well. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. The best is truly yet to come. Until next time, love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, of course,
wrestling.